The next three tips are going to be about Texas rigging. Texas rigging. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is to match the hook to the bait. You know, to make sure you're using the right size and the right kind of hook. You know, whether you need a wide gap or a standard worm hook mm -hmm. or a straight shank hook. I use, I carry all three and I use all three. So, you know, I, just different situations, different plastics. Don't have time to go through all that mm -hmm. right now, but make yeah. sure that you research it and see which hook fits which bait best. Um, Next would be, for te if I'm Texas rigging, I kind of consider that a little bit of a finesse technique most of the time. So I'm going to use as light a weight as possible. Where with a jig, sometimes I'll go heavier and try to get more of a reaction. With the Texas rig, I'm typically mm -hmm. going to go light because I'm wanting something a little more natural, and that's what I'm going to do with the Texas rig. Hmm, number three would be again on your colors. Mm -hmm. You know, keep it simple. We, we travel all across the country, and I catch bass on say a, you know a, a bass pro river bug i carry about five or six colors mm -hmm. i use three of them a lot mm -hmm. keep it simple <laughs> right yeah. you don't need a whole bunch of different colors to catch bass anywhere you go uh, i would say the same thing applies with that um, a lot of it as the jig fishing right it's mm -hmm. a technique that you can fish in a lot of different situations a lot of different scenarios uh, and a lot of different baits Right, so the first thing would be choosing the right bait for the situation, because um, you can take a Texas rig, you can put a 10-inch Zumo Monster Worm on it, you can mm -hmm. throw a little tiny flipping bait on mm -hmm. it. Um, so I would say choosing the right bait for those situations. Um, and then I would say a lot of it's the same, choosing the right um, weight size. Yeah. Right, If I'm yeah. fishing up shallow, a lot of times it'll be a little bit lighter if you go offshore gets windy mm -hmm. like it is today, like it is today. <laughs> you want to yeah. keep it down a little bit so go with a little bit heavier weight um, and then also a lot of it is choosing the right hook yes. um, okay. adapting that to the bait you know if I'm flipping a lot of times I'll go with a straight shank mm -hmm. flipping hook but when I move offshore I like to go with a worm style hook mm -hmm. or something that's mm -hmm. maybe a little bit longer and has an offset offset shank bend to it Texas rigs okay I, I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I've caught a few bass on Texas in my day, and Texas rigs definitely will play no matter where you're at. But but my, my favorite thing to Texas rig, no doubt, is a 10-inch worm in the summertime. Throwing it around brush piles, it's, it's something that absolutely catches them. But for me, when I'm Texas rigging a big worm, out deep. I like to actually make sure my my weight is not pegged. And the reason for that is when I bring that over that brush pile, that weight almost free falls weightless. And so I feel I get a few more bites. So if you're fishing brush or fishing around a lot of cover a little bit offshore, stop pegging your weight. You might get a few more bites. Also, when I'm fishing a bait that I'm flipping that is a glide bait, almost sort of like those beaver style yes. baits, um, you know, a biffle bug without the legs on it. Anything that glides, I do not peg my weight. And the reason for that is because you want your bait to glide a lot more, okay. you don't peg it. Or a tube is a great example. If you're texturing in a tube, it won't gl it'll glide a lot more if you don't have it. Peg your baits that have, uh, you know, have appendages on them. Yeah. So your, your more cross style mm -hmm. baits, like a hammer cross, stuff like that, peg those. So those are the three things that I would recommend. Definitely works for me. Texas rigging, number one tip is make sure your worm is straight. I see so many people that do not line that worm up with the seam. You know, there's a seam where that mold closes. Make sure your worm's straight. Um, you know, I really prefer a round bend hook. You just have the best the best hooking percentage would be my second tip. You know, like a good must add round bend hook. Um, and then third, the fall rate. You know, I, I, would, I would just think about what size weight you're gonna use, you know. The lighter the weight, the slower it's going to make you use, work that bait. The heavier the weight, the faster you can work it. So uh, experiment with different size worm weights. Uh, see if it changes the amount of bites you get. Mm -hmm. um, you know, number one for me on a Texas rig is I, I, I'm 100% of the time peg my weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, the deal is that way I always know where my bait is. The only drawback to not pegging it, a lot of times what will happen is, especially like if you're using a, a creature bait or something with legs, that bait will get caught on something and the weight will pull away from it. And you've about wasted the cast because the bait didn't go where you want it to. And so if I want the bait to fall slow, I'll just use an extra small weight. But 100% of the time, I always peg my weight. I typically always, number two would be, I always use a rubber insert. I, mm -hmm. I, I do not use a bobber stop. Mm -hmm. um, I use the rubber insert. And the reason for that, it protects my line from tungsten weights. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that's different, a lot of guys now have switched over to using tungsten weights instead of lead. And those weights are extremely hard and they have hard edges. And then I find they're a lot harder on your line regardless if you're using braid or you're using, um, 
fluorocarbons. So I always use the rubber peg. Mm -hmm. The other deal is have a good selection of rubber pegs because not all weights have the same line hole. Mm -hmm. And so typically the bigger the weight, the bigger the hole. So there are pegs made for the bigger weights. Oh, great tips, great tips. Is I fish a straight shank hook on all my soft plastics. So it's a Trocar TK180. Um, a straight shank hook will give you a much better hook and land ratio on any Texas rig bait, period. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, it doesn't have the flex in it as an offset hook. Then uh, typically fish the lightest possible sinker you can fish to get away with. Uh, you'll get more bites typically with a lighter weight than you will a heavier weight. And then third is, goes back to fishing uh, uh, fluorocarbon line. So for me it's trilene, uh, that'll help you get more bites. Top three tricks um, or tips. Could be tricks too. Tricks, tips. Um, <laughs> you know, let's go bait choices. Um, number one for me is actually a Yamamoto Senko. Uh -huh. uh, Texas rig it, either weightless. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I will do is put a eighth ounce uh, Eagle Claw tungsten hook or weight on there. And it has a unique fall to it. I peg that uh, always. And it has a unique fall to it. and. If I'm in trouble anywhere, that's a bait that I know will catch fish. Mm -hmm. If I don't know anything about the lake, I know I can tie that on and catch mm -hmm. fish. Um, and then the the flapping hog, mm -hmm. which, which is just a beaver style bait, mm -hmm. very subtle. You can flip with it, you can pitch with it, you can cast with it, you can do everything with it. Uh, they have a brand new bait out called the Cowboy, uh, which I have just started to use. And I think that that's gonna be you know something that's going to come into play big time for me in the future mm -hmm. it's literally brand new i got them about five days ago oh, it's wow. that new so that's something that will probably come into the mix here pretty quick mm -hmm. uh, so bait choices for me sanko flapping hog and cowboy mm -hmm. and that's it that's it you don't need anything else simple like it i like <laughs> it a lot